So reapportionment and gerrymandering. Uh, this is an important uh, concept. These are two important concepts. One is the actual thing that was listed in the Constitution. The other is actual practice that actually happens. So basically, uh, the House of Representatives in 1929 was set to be 435 members, and it was set by law that it can't change. So we basically have this same number, but the House is chosen by population. And originally in the Constitution, there would be one representative for 30,000 people. So if you look at the math and the number, we'd have over 11,100 uh, people in the House of Representatives if we kept that 1 to 30 range. So the way we're doing it right now is basically we stick it at 435. So now one representative equals about 650,000 people, roughly on average. So what we have is every 10 years we have a census, which is in the Constitution. So we had in 2000, 2010, the next census is 2020. Then we will decide basically what states gained population, what stayed, states lost population and stayed the same. So then we look at from that point, okay, what happens to the representatives? We reapportion the representatives to the different states. In the last um, 2010, Arizona gained one Representative, so we have now nine representatives in Congress. We have two senators, so that's a total of 11, but this is for the House. So we gained one, and then other states might gain more, some might lose some, so we just move them around. Um, so that's reapportionment, is moving around the representatives, increasing, decreasing, or staying the same based on the census in every 10 years. Now, gerrymandering, and basically the state legislatures are responsible for creating the districts and they're responsible for okay so now we have to get nine districts in arizona when we had eight so they have to divide up the state and divide up the population they have to be roughly about six hundred fifty thousand per representative so then the state is in charge of doing this um, some do it very political so if you have a republican or a democratic legislature they actually do it to that benefit others like arizona had a commission where you had say two republican two independent two democrat and they tried to do it fairly and arizona's done a good job we right now have at least like five republican and four democrat in the house of representatives the districts are drawn correctly where you might have uh, other states where it's impossible for the Republican or Democratic um, members to get seats because they gerrymandered. And gerrymandered is like making a weird shape, a weird um, shape district. Um, and normally it's not a box, it's not a square or triangle. It could be uh, a, just a real strange shape. It could be a line, it could be a circle. It, it's all different, and you can see some of those. And we'll actually play a redistricting game which actually does this. So gerrymandering has a bad connotation. It's for political reasons. It's the reason why I think a lot of the elections are not um, competitive. It's why we have the same Democrat coming from the same district or the Republican coming from the same district. 90% of our incumbents in Congress are reelected, and that's pretty big for the House. So that means a lot of the districts are safe districts, and that's due to gerrymandering. So a lot of people want to have more competitive um, elections through term limits, but I think it's if you get rid of gerrymandering, then you can actually make the elections more competitive. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in class, and we'll actually play the redistricting game in class, which will give you a better idea of what is reapportionment.